Hello everyone, my name is Karex and I'm a professional challenger coach who has helped players with over 1000 hours of coaching to hit the next level of improvement. Today I'm excited to bring you a preview of the upcoming patch. As always, there are a lot of changes to look forward to, including champion buffs, nerfs, adjustments and even some new skins to add to your collection. So sit back, relax and let's dive into what you can expect from the latest patch, including some major adjustment later in this video. Swain's upcoming buff is a much needed change change for the champion. The recent increase in the cost of Art of Ages component hurts Swain's strength, making it more difficult for him to compete in the current meta. However, this buff to his primary DPS and wave clear spell, including an increase in base damage, ability power ratio, bonus damage per bolt and the P ratio should help to compensate for the previous changes and boost Swain's viability in matches. Overall, Swain mains can look forward to a stronger champion in the upcoming patch. Get ready Aatrox mains, because Aatrox is finally getting a well-deserved buff. His passive Deathbringer Stance is getting an upgrade to its level scaling, and his ultimate ability will now provide even more movement speed. This is music to the ears for every Aatrox player who has been struggling in Masters plus ELO. Is this going to be enough? We shall see, but get ready to unleash your inner demon to dominate the rift. Speaking of champions receiving some love, Volibear mains it's time to rejoice as well. For quite a while you have been voicing your concerns and the developers have finally taken notice. Volibear will be getting a buff to his damage health ratio and health ratio on Frenzied Maul, making him more formidable as a champion. However, it's important to remember that he'll still face some mana pool issues, so managing your resources wisely will be absolute key. Let me also offer a little tip on the side. Consider rushing Black Cleaver to like truly bring out the complete potential of this champion. And if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, you should definitely consider ProGuide's premium coaching and course services. With expert coaches and in-depth course is covering all aspects of League of Legends gameplay, ProGuides can help you master champions like Amumu and Trundle or literally any other champion to climb the ranked ladder. Speaking of Amumu, his recent changes have improved his early game clear and scaling into the later stages of the game, making him a more consistent damage dealer despite just building tank items. As for Trundle, his slight increase in attack speed and mana pool allows him for more flexibility with spell usage, especially for those who enjoy playing him as a support. The only item change you are going to see this patch is coming to Lichbane. Here we have a slight increase in its ability power. While this leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to buffs, it's potentially just the first approach with a proper follow-up just a tiny tad later. Next up, we are going to take a closer look at nerfs, and first on the list is Scion. And they provided a little bit of extra context for this change. They want to account for the durability update and heart steal. Therefore, they make his passive decay rate about 1 to 1.5 seconds shorter. As you can already imagine, your favorite Scion one trick pony is is not going to be too happy about this change. Another nerf comes to an all-time classic, Jinx. Her attack damage growth is being reduced to make her a little bit less powerful. Given the amount we are talking about, this is just going to be a minor slap on the wrist and won't be enough to ruin her or change too much about the champion or its identity. Nonetheless, slapping the nerf label on a champion is always going to influence pick rates, regardless of their actual impact on said champion. When it comes to adjustments, Riot never really shies away from showing some weird things that we never thought would happen, but then happen regardless. This time, they're shifting power so Belveth has a more satisfactory jungle clear. They're taking away a little bit of her base attack damage scaling, but introduce a stronger monster modifier to Void Surge. Talia, on the other hand, is receiving a quality of life update. Previously, you'd be locked out of casting ult on taking and dealing damage. Now it's only locked upon taking damage, and that way you can hunt on your opponents far more easily. Easily. A bulk of adjustments is also coming into Kale's direction. The AP ratio on the Starfire Spellblade is taking a massive hit, but the passive wave damage is getting a slight increase. Furthermore, her ultimate's cast time is cut short by one second, but the AoE delay is increased by one second as well. Not only that, they are also giving her ult a scaling range that grows with the ability rank while simultaneously lowering its base damage and AP scaling. Something that should have been done in the first place is finally done right, and Kale no longer reduces her attack range while casting ultimate on herself. Statistically speaking, Kale had been struggling for quite some while now if you take a look at her win rates and high elo, and an adjustment or even a buff was definitely in order. Do you think that this is the right approach? I don't think it will be done with these changes and we'll see some follow-up soon after. The next big one in this video is going to be the Nico Midscope update. They want to preserve Nico's gameplay styles, but give more emphasis to her trickster identity. The new Nico can 
against our unit's appearance when it isn't an epic monster that includes minions, traps, wards, or even plants. This disguise doesn't break anymore upon taking damage, but only when you are crowd controlled or the disguise self would have died from the incoming attack. Sadly, Nico won't inherit her disguise target's attack speed and movement speed anymore if the stat is higher than hers. For the abilities, Blooming Burst is losing a bit of base damage for the sake of an increased scaling and a monster modifier for the jungle roll. Shape Splitter allows Nico to send a clone into a new direction. This much you know already, but while this is happening, the clone will also play animations, sounds and other things such as laughter taunting and all the things you can imagine. On top of that, it's also getting a monster modifier to deal more damage with and powered attacks. Similar to Blooming Burst treatment, Tangle Bobs is also getting a slight base damage reduction in trade for an improved scaling. For Pop Blossom, Riot is hitting us with another change. As Nico jumps into the air, she's suspending all nearby enemies. She won't be receiving any shield anymore and the flat damage and scaling have been drastically lowered. While on the other hand, the cooldown is also being increased on all ranks but the last. At least she keeps one feature. After a brief delay, she crashes down, deals damage and stuns everyone. I personally think that this major loss in damage for the ultimate ability can be something that people will be very frustrated with. You have a lot of changes for this champion's damage potential and obviously a new choice for the role selection with jungle becoming a more valid option. So I'm really curious to see what role Nico will assume in the game and how good she's going to be in the jungle role. Will you be a carry? Will you be a setupper? It's kind of a thing we need to figure out in the future and how strong Nico is really going to be, at least for the jungle role. And if you're a Nico fan or just an avid Nico player, please just let me know in the comments below what you think about those changes. I'm absolutely curious. With the upcoming MSI, we are also getting ready for a new event. This event will obviously, as in proper fashion, feature another event pass. But how fast you will be able to complete its missions is yet unclear. But many people hope that it provides a better and more casual friendly experience when it comes to collecting the goodies you desire. And honestly, I'm all for it. I really don't want to grind out for ages after buying the pass and I really hope that the mission progression is not going to be too tedious. Speaking of buying though, alongside this event we are also getting a new absolute hot skin line with the name of Ink Shadow. Kaisa, Yone, Volibear, Aurelian Soul, Udia, Masi and Yasuo will be getting new skins within that theme and Yasuo even gets another prestige version. If you want to get that, you better get ready to grind out some tokens, otherwise you have to wait some time until it returns to the mythic shop. And yeah, that wraps up pretty much everything for the incoming patch. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the sub button to not miss out on future videos.